Welcome to Raising the Standard, where we promise you the Word of God that will build your faith and challenge you to the call of God in your life. And we're sharing Jesus Christ and meeting the needs of His people in spirit, soul, and body. It's always a privilege for us to get a chance to come and share God's Word at Reach World Bible Church. We want you to know we love you. We appreciate you. Cecile always sends her love to you. And uh, we just thank God for what He's doing there. And hey, good news. A lot of things going on at Reach World Bible Church right now. Uh, want you to know you're invited to our in-person service. We're having in-person services on the first, second, and third Sundays of every month right now. So this Sunday at 10 o'clock, come on and join us out in the sanctuary. We're having fun, having a good time. We're continuing our live stream services on the Reaching World Bible Church Facebook page and the Reaching World Bible Church YouTube channel. So join us uh, however you can, we're, but we're in person. And, uh, and I said a lot of things going on. I want you to be pr in prayer with us. Uh, we uh, have restarted our renovation process. So, hey, we're going to look different in a bit very soon. So be in prayer for our safety and, and for everything to go and be quick and be done. So we just thank you, God, at least this phase of it anyway. we got a long way to go, but this is a phase that is very important in the sanctuary. So thank God for that and thank God for you. Also today at 11 o'clock, uh, live stream services at Reach in the World Bible Church. Join us. Uh, it, uh, we have that 11 o'clock we call Reaching You with the Word, and then a rebroadcast of that at 7 p.m. Uh, that's where Sister Ellen and I get on both platforms, Facebook and YouTube. And we say hi and uh, comment on the message and stuff. So join us. It, it'll bless you. And if you, if you join us at 11 o'clock, then you'll, you'll probably want to tell somebody to join us at 7 o'clock, too, for that rebroadcast of that, and you'll be blessed. Well, Pastor, what are we talking about today? Well, we're, uh, you know, the time that we're living in today we need help, you know, we really do, everybody does. And and thank God for those of us that are believers in particular, we know where our help comes from. Well, Pastor, what did you entitle the message today? And it's very simple, help. <laughs> We all need it. <laughs> Help, we all need it. Yes, we do. And you know what? That just didn't start with us right now. Even back in the biblical days when Jesus was walking on this earth with his disciples, they know they needed help too as well. And uh, we're going to look at a particular passage in the Word in, in the book of Matthew starting off. And, you know, uh, there Jesus was getting ready to go to heaven, getting ready to be crucified and lead them. And, and he had told them a few things about how, how buildings weren't going to be there that are there. And that, you know, it really explained that he wouldn't be there and some things that are go, that were going on. And so you can imagine having walked with the Lord Jesus for all this time. And then all of a sudden he's telling you he's not going to be there. They had some questions. And, and, and it was, you know, and you would have too if uh, the master of the universe had been walking with you. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden he says, I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be out of here. But thank God he wasn't going to leave him comfortless. But getting ahead of myself a little bit. Well, what was the question that, that they had? Well, we see it in the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Matthew 24, verse 3. And this is the New Living Translation. It says this, and they had been walking together and they had asked him the question. It says, later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately. In other words, they waited till the folks got away. And they came privately and said, Tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? He said he was going to leave it, but he was telling them he was going to be coming back again. And they want to know, well, are there going to be any indications? You know, because, you know, you've been, we've been walking with you, and uh, you've been sharing, uh, teaching us, and leading us, and guiding us, and showing us what to do, and now you're going to be gone, but you tell, tell us you're going to be coming back. Uh, how are we going to know this or, or again are there any signs or in the in the in the any indications of what we can expect to do in other words they were needing help and understanding this and you would have too if you had been in their position but thank god god tends to answer questions in the word even even before the act sometimes because he walks when jesus when he walks 
on this earth. He did not know all things as his Shekinah glory power was. He's laid that aside, but he knew things by the gifts of the Spirit. He, he, he walked in the fruit of the Spirit and revelation came to him, just like it can come to us if we're hearing and if we're listening and if we're sensitive and understand what we're entitled to. That's very important. But they asked this question and uh, Jesus an started answering them in uh, Matthew 24 here. And so we want to look and see what information he gave them. And starting in that next verse in Matthew 24, verse 4, we're going to look at a few verses here. It said, Jesus told them, don't let anyone mislead you because he knew there were going to be challenges and people were going to come and pretend to be him. And we see that kind of thing now. But he said, don't let anyone mislead you. The next verse continues on to say, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many. You know, and many folks have. We've seen that throughout our history that, that we've been on this earth. People came and declared themselves as the Messiah, as Savior. Some have even called themselves Jesus, and, and they've had groups to, that followed them. Some were led to their death in many cases because uh, they were deceived. And the enemy, the devil, the scripture says in John 10, 10, that he comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. He is the deceiver, and he will use deception. And anyone that yields to that uh, will, 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 uh, will follow him. And then anyone who follows those folks will be deceived. And we saw that's, that's what Jesus is warning his disciples about then, but he's also warning us right now. He told us how he was going to come. You just got, we got to get in the word and see. And so we won't be shocked or surprised. He let us know. The next verse continues on in this passage in, in, in uh, Matthew 24, where he said, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars. He, but he says, don't panic. Don't we hear wars and threats of wars all the time? He said, yes, these things must take place, and they are. But he also said this, but the end won't follow immediately. We have saw these things like this for years and years, and they continue to manifest. But Jesus, is, he was telling them then, and he's telling us now, don't panic. Uh, and really, for believers, for Christians who know who they are in Christ and know the word, you can't threaten a Christian with heaven to begin with. But he was telling them, as he's telling us today, don't panic when you see these uh, wars and rumors of wars and all the things that are going on. And then other things he said, as we continue in verse 7, that, that, that he said in, 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 in Matthew 24, nation will go to war against nation. And you know that word nation also means ethnic groups. Groups will be against other groups. Nation has multiple meanings. And so it's in, in this verse, it's inclusive of uh, not only countries, but it's ethnic groups can be against other ethnic groups uh, here. And we see that too. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And he says, there will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. And again, warnings for them, warnings for us to recognize. And as we look in verse 8, it says, in the last days, he says, but all this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. It's not the end. Uh, more of these things are, did come and they have come and they will come. And again, warning. And Pastor, goodness, we need help. We do. But we know where our help's coming from. And in the last days, we're going to need it even more and more. But he's letting us know, don't fear, don't panic. Verse 12 in, in this chapter goes on to say, sin will be rampant everywhere. And boy, do we see that these days. And the love of many will grow cold. And we're seeing that too as well. Even people that have followed and, and loved the Lord seem to uh, 
uh, have wax cold. What do you mean by grow cold, wax cold? You know, not being on fire for God, not being, uh, uh, getting discouraged, allowing the enemy to cause them to be despondent, just uh, moving away from the things of God, following uh, the temptations of the world or conforming to what the world says. Laws change and people think, well, it must be okay. Well, if God said it in his word that it's not okay, it's not okay. We don't, our mind shouldn't be uh, moved by what even natural laws that are contrary to this law. We got to know what God's word says and follow him. The scripture lets us know, and we're, we don't have that particular one, but we all know, and I've been studying that in, in, uh, in the book of Romans 12, he said that our minds can be transformed or renewed by the word of God. And that is, again, him giving us help through the word, but we have to know that we we must follow him. You know, just like then, I'm sure your disciples were in a state of panic when Jesus told them that. But uh, you know, and we hear things today. We if we listen and we uh, just go by what's politically correct or what uh, only just watch uh, what news media says, and we thank God for folks giving us the truth, but a lot of times things can be slanted one way or another. And sometimes it can be absolutely not even true. That's the reason it's so important for us to know the truth. The Bible says that we should know the truth, talking about the Word of God, and it is the truth that will set us free. It's the truth that will help us to be secure in who we are and whose we are, what we can do, what we can have, and operate in the peace of God. Peace that goes beyond all natural understanding. You can't get that from any other source other than God and His Word. What do you mean peace that goes beyond natural understanding? In other words, when things are falling around all around us, as they seem to be uh, even today, when you're in God and Jesus, the Spirit of God, is present in you, you'll have a peace to not only go through situations, but to grow in those situations and grow through them and become stronger and, and have knowing that, hey, God knows the end before the beginning ever started and he wants to help you. So in other words, if we, you and I need help, the Holy Spirit is here to be a help and give us wisdom of knowing what to do and know what not to do in every situation. God's word, his empowerment of his spirit is our helper. And he wants to lead and guide you and I into all truth and help us know, hey, I'm going to keep you. He said in, in scripture, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll stick closer to you than a brother. In other words, he, God's got to say, man, when we got him and we hold on to him, and that's the thing, we got to hold on to him. A lot of folks, when they get discouraged, even Christians, and you have been there maybe from time to time, have instead of when, when you need help, instead of running to God and his word, they run away from God. They say, well, you know, I did wrong. I messed up. Uh, God doesn't love me anymore. That's a trick of the enemy. When you have messed up, and when you have done wrong, that's the time to go to God and ask for his forgiveness. Ask for his help. Hey, help. We all need it. We've all been there. It's not new with you. God is here. He's present. And when you're a believer, he lives on the inside of you. The Spirit of God resides on the inside of you. That all-knowing, that all-powerful, that, that all-present, omnipresent being is in you and in everyone at the same time. How can that be? He's God, and he's well able to do whatever is needed to be done. But you and I have to know where and who 
our help is and where it comes from. It comes from God. <laughs> Amen. And he's in us. Well, Pastor, can you give me some scripture? You talked about he's omnipresent. He's with us all the time. How can he be that, that way? He's God. And, and God is manifested in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The scripture says that. I'm not making that up. And, and don't you be deceived by anyone that says contrary. And the presence of God indwells us, and he loves us, and he wants us to know that he's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life, and we can only enter in through him. But let's look at the, what the Word says. Find out. Don't just pull one scripture out of its context, because you know what? People can do that and make the Bible say anything that they want it to say. You, we have to be contextual in our truth. In other words, uh, the Bible is the greatest interpreter of the Bible. Amen. And we got to know that. Well, Pastor, give me a word. Well, in uh, you said about this Holy Spirit, who he is, the person, the third person in the Godhead that the Bible says he is. In John's Gospel, chapter 14, John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 16 and 17, and this is in the Amplified Classic. It's not a, uh, a translation, but it's an amplification, amplification of certain words, and this is class. Notice what it says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comfort. Jesus said this. He's going to ask the Father, Father God. And I, Jesus said, will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter. Who is that? The Holy Spirit. And notice how comforter, the Holy Spirit is amplified out. Counselor, counselor, he's going to advise us. He's there for us. Helper, we already, that's what we're talking about. He's our helper. He wants to help us in everything that we do. Intercessor, he's positionally right now, he's, he's at the right hand of the Father, but positionally we're seated with him in heavenly places, and he's interceding on our behalf. Advocate, he's speaking up for us. An advocate, another term for advocate is attorney or lawyer, someone who represents you. The Holy Spirit does. Strengthener, thank God we need the strength of God. And that's who the Holy Spirit is. Again, he is a person. He's not an it. He's a strengthener. And he's a standby. <laughs> hey, he'll stand by you even when you're not standing by him. But you got to Keep your hands in his hands if you want to walk in that empowerment that he makes available. And then that verse continues on to say in verse 16 that he, the Holy Spirit, may remain with you forever. He is a he. He is not an it. He is a person. He is real. He's our counselor, our helper, our intercessor, our, our advocate, our strengthener, and I stand by. The next verse say, says this in in an amplified classic that uh, uh, that we may remain in Him forever. We, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, they cannot. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, and what we mean by receiving is they don't acknowledge Him as is even being God. Uh, so they're not going to welcome him, and they're not going to take him to heart. But he's available to every believer. Why? And again, it describes why the world don't receive him, because it does not see him, again, he, person, or know him and recognize him. This is what the Bible says. But you know him as a believer, and we recognize him because he lives on the inside of us. And he, the Holy Spirit, lives with you constantly. Thank God for that. And he will be in you. The Holy Spirit will, is in us. He lives in, he dwells us in with us. Jesus gave us this instruction of how we can receive the help that he makes available unto us by and through the Holy Spirit. We all see, see further instruction in the New King James Version in John 16, verse 13. John 16, verse 13, he, continue, he said this, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, again, identifying the Holy Spirit, who he is, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he, the, 
the, the Holy Spirit, the, the third person of the Godhead. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. In other words, what the Father says, the Holy Spirit is going to speak unto you. There again, God manifested. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. One God manifested in three persons. And I know sometimes that, that's difficult for our uh, little, little minds to understand, but one thing to help me understand, when you have one basketball team, you got five individuals on the court at, the one, at one time. They're separate individuals, but they're working together. And the better the team is, the better they work together. God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, I say what the Father says. The Holy Spirit says, hey, I'm going to tell you what, what the Father says. And, and, and you're talking about a unit of one, a unit, a team is called a unit. Unit means one. So you can have individuals in a unit and it still be one. Pastor? That, I understand that part, and we do. That's, and a lot of times we try to overthink things or things are, are said and we get, can get confused about them, but God is, has not given us a spirit of confusion. <laughs> Amen. He's not confused, and we don't have to be if we trust him and trust his word. And, you know, I found the simpler, the better. I understand better when, I, when it's simple, and most people are like that way. So Jesus gave us the instructions, and and thank God, and we ought to be thankful for the Holy Spirit leading us. It is so important that we train our ears to listen to his instructions and follow him and do what he says to do. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He's not going to force you to do anything. Now, the devil is going to holler loud and try to coerce and make you do something, but the Holy Spirit will whisper to you. That's the reason it's so important for us to uh, be able to hear that still, small voice. How can I hear him when I get all the distractions of the world out of the way and when I am focused in on listening to what God says to do? That's why it's so important for us to have quiet our minds and open up our spirits to hear instruction from the Holy Spirit because he wants to lead and guide you and I into all truth. Whatever you need, he's there to provide it. He's there to be your counselor, as we say. He's always there to say, this is the way, or this is not the way. The Holy Spirit will give you direction in what to do. He's the only saying, you know, he's only saying what the Father says. He's only instructing us to what the, what the Father says. He will always give you the correct, the appropriate right answer of what to do. The Holy Spirit is there to help us. He's to lead us in every situation. He'll strengthen us. He, he, again, he's our advocate. He's showing us what we can do and what we can't do. And so he's the one who will help us. So turn your eyes to him. Know that he's the way, he's the truth, and that he's the life. And yes, you and I need help, but thank God we know where our help comes from. Our help comes from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God lives on the inside of us, and we can live and move and have our being in him. If you've never made him the Lord of your life, that's the first step. I want to pray with you right now. Let's bow our heads and, and pray this prayer with me. Father God, right now, I stretch forth my heart unto you. I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that you died for me. I make you the Lord of my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for being my kinsman redeemer. I'm redeemed from the Lord. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. I'm redeemed to the Lord. He's my Savior, and He's my Lord. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart. I am forgiven of my sins. Thank you, Lord, for helping me.
in Jesus' name. Amen. You just prayed that prayer. Uh, our announcer is going to come in a minute and tell us some things that you need to do to, that you can help us. And if you want to help to support this ministry for us to give, there are different ways that you can give. And, and uh, she'll tell you about some of the ways you can do that too as well. I want to remind you coming up again Sunday, 10, 10 o'clock in person in the sanctuary at Reach the World Bible Church. Join us today, 11 o'clock. And then a rebroadcast of that at 7 o'clock. Join us for that and where you can feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. Hey, we're going to see you next time. Listen to what our announcer has to say. Thank you for joining us today for this life-changing word. If you pray the prayer of salvation, we have some materials to help you with your new walk with God. Three mini books by Dr. Kenneth E. Hagen. The New Birth. In Him and Why Tongues. These books are a free gift that will give you a greater understanding of salvation, what you are entitled in God, and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. If you would like to become a partner with RTWBC, your prayers and financial support will help us work together and accomplish great things for God. On our website, rtwbc.com, you can submit prayer requests and also give to the ministry safely and securely by debit or credit card on our online giving page. Just go to Choose Funds and follow the directions. You can also give by Cash App at dollar sign RTWBC or by mail at Reaching the World Bible Church, PO Box 2487, Sylacauga, Alabama 35150. Stay connected with us by liking the Reaching the World Bible Church Facebook page and subscribing on the Reaching the World Bible Church YouTube channel. You can also contact us at www.rtwbc.com. Joining us at 109 North Cannon Avenue, Sylacauga, Alabama, or call us at 256-249-9790. Please join us again for our next service where we will continue to preach the uncompromising word of God to help feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. God bless you, and we'll see you on the next time.